and welcome back. I'm Mike Quincy. I'm Jake Fisher. I'm Alex Nizek. So today we are going to talk about a type of vehicle that I'm sure many people have heard of. You've seen the letters PHEV, which of course stands for plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Excellent. You did your homework. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, and, and this type of vehicle joins the regular hybrid models that we've been talking about, writing about, and testing for many years, uh, as well as EVs and traditional internal combustion engine vehicles. And uh, we are going to focus this podcast solely on plug-in hybrids. We have just recently bought over a dozen of them, mm -hmm. and we're certainly interested to seeing how they're going to be different from their hybrid counterparts, from their regular internal combustion engine counterparts, in terms of ride handling, fuel economy, and whatnot. Uh, so Jake, why are we digging so deep into plug-in hybrids these days? Sure. Well, I mean, first of all, what's about Consumer Reports? I mean, we try <laughs> to make a very complex things easier, right? We're trying to explain what's going on in the market. And obviously, we talk a lot about electric vehicles. We mm -hmm. talk a lot about hybrids and all that. Um, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles with that, you know, FEV? I don't know. <laughs> FEV or PEV? <laughs> PHEV. I mean, right? It, P H E V. Yep. I mean, these are the least understood vehicles mm -hmm. on the market, and there are more and more of them every day. So this is a really interesting topic, I think, for us to talk about and try to explain and try mm -hmm. to figure out who they're for. I mean, what are they? You know, I mean, it's almost better to think about them as a dual fuel vehicle, right? And we know there's hybrid vehicles, and there are electric vehicles. This is both. Mm -hmm. It could operate like an electric vehicle. It could also operate like a hybrid. Um, but it gets really complicated. It's like, who are they for? Mm -hmm. Who should get one and mm -hmm. who should not get one? And when they're so misunderstood, um, you know, it's this very complicated. And and if people don't really understand what they are, the wrong type of, you know, you're going to get one is not going to do what you want it to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it was the right choice for you, but you didn't really understand that that was there. So, so I, I think it's great that we're kind of talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. the advice that I got when my wife and I started having children were lower your expectations. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and that that Ouch. might be the case with with plugins yeah. because they're not uh, pure, pure EVs, so you're mm -hmm. not going to get as much mileage for for pure electric driving. Right. But, but I mean, Alex, you are chiefly involved in hands-on testing. Uh, as much as anyone here at Consumer Reports Test Track, what are we hoping to find in in looking into these types of vehicles? Yeah, I mean, so like you both mentioned, they're kind of misunderstood, right? We've been testing hybrids and, you know, purely gas powered models for a while and then kind of, I won't say ignoring the plugins, but they just kind of existed and we haven't really dived in, you know, or dove in too far, right? So um, really just trying to even get ourselves up to speed on all the kind of nuances of how these things work and then and then like jake said figure out um maybe who they're for but you know in terms of the vehicles themselves it it starts to get pretty weird and complicated when you have two powertrains essentially on board on the same vehicle right so not only do we want to figure out how they operate but hopefully in driving these and testing these and and living with them we can tell everybody and and hopefully inform people on the best strategies mm -hmm. and the best way to get the most out of the plug-in hybrid right mm -hmm. when do i use the electric power when do i use the gas power or operate as a hybrid right um charging and all these things that kind of go along with having um multiple powertrains in the vehicle and you know along with that are, are things like range you know you're going to see a an epa range figure for these cars um it's a combined number but we are curious of how does it do in the city how does it do on the highway mm -hmm. um are there differences in winter versus summer because you know we talk about that with evs so yep. now you have a little bit of an ev on this vehicle what happens in winter um there's a bunch of controls that come along with these cars, right? For right. managing the system now that you have on board. So it, right. it gets very complicated. <laughs> right. When you, when you, when you said um, you have to decide when, when are you using the gas engine, when are you using EV? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's, that's interesting for, for clarification, Jake, because uh, if, if someone doesn't know a lot about plug-in hybrids, they don't realize that you can actually decide when you're going to use all your electric juice, right? <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's totally right. You know, I mean, you think about the other powertrains we talk about, right? Okay, <clears throat> hybrids. You just drive them like a normal car. Right. You yeah. don't have to do anything different. And you don't really have a choice. You and know, the, just and goes... they're all pretty similar. Right. And they're all pretty similar. It's just basically a gas car that gets really good fuel efficiency. Then there's gas cars, which we all know how to do. And then there's electric cars, which they're electric. Okay, mm -hmm. simple. 
Here, it's almost like you're you're in the booth of like a power station and you're like, okay, do I switch this one on or that one on? And mm -hmm. you have that control mm -hmm. and there's a strategy to it. Now, I mean, you talk about you know, lowering your expectations. I mean, I think part of the issue is, is that for the right person, these things are amazing. So, mm -hmm. so I mean, the theory, I almost almost started by like the theory of the pros to a plug in mm -hmm. habit, right? Mm -hmm. We know that most people buy the vehicle that you might need, right? I mean, you buy the vehicle that could tow 10,000 pounds because I might need right. to do that. I the buy the vehicle version. that could go off-roading because I might need to do that. You mm -hmm. know, you never know when you have to go up the Rubicon on the way to the mall. <laughs> but, but <clears throat> Been there. Or you buy the car that could go 180 miles an hour yeah, because... Because right. you might need to, right? You might need to. <laughs> oh, it feels really good at 50. So. It, or theoretically. Sometimes it's really noisy, but that, <laughs> we'll, we'll let that go. But... But in terms of range, right? And now like EVs have become like, everything's a range. I mean, we're getting, we're seeing like a hundred kilowatt hour battery, mm -hmm, 150 mm -hmm. more that, that, that Ram is like 200 plus. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, that's a whole crazy. lot of weight, a whole lot of resources that mm -hmm. go into these giant batteries because I might need to go on a trip. I get that. The thing about the plug-in hybrid is realizing what I mean, we used to have these conversations with General Motors years ago when we talked about the Chevy, the Volt, when that came out. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm, I'm old. So, I mean, when it came to the Volt, it was like most people, they did studies and the studies are still true. Most people really commute, they, they drive like 40 miles a day. Right. Mm -hmm. Most people are doing that. Mm -hmm. Do you want to sell an EV that goes 40 miles? No, because I might need to go further. What the idea here is that what if I got a car that goes 40 miles on electricity, if I needed to go further, I don't have to worry about stopping at a mm -hmm. looking for a, the the charging station i don't have to worry about that but in if i need to go further then i just drive a hybrid car right right and that is the theory about that and if that is if you have a 40 mile commute or a 35 mile commute and you got a car that goes that many miles you're basically driving electricity all the time right and on that one time i take the trip i am stress-free i'm not looking right, at like right. my my phone trying to figure out where the Calculate charger is and, and like i hope it's open you don't have to worry about that at all yeah. so that is the but the problem is is that that's not everyone's mm -hmm. situation and the situations can change. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I think there are some interesting kind of situations, you know, from like a systems approach that come up when you're thinking about this. Cause if you are that person who's commuting the 40 miles and you're pretty much always using the EV um, portion that you paid for, you're effectively carrying around an ice power train that doesn't really get used right. and vice versa. If you right. never charge it and you're always running as a hybrid, you're kind of carrying around this giant battery that Correct. you never use. Yes. So there's some negatives with that and and just the the complexity of having a gas powertrain on board that operates sometimes right so now in the middle of winter the engine fires up randomly and it's stone cold but you need the extra power to accelerate like how do you handle that and the gas tanks are pressurized because the fuel might sit in there for months right right so there's all these little things that kind of go into making this work and it gets complicated. I, I think we should have set this up as like a debate. Like some one of us <laughs> pro yeah, one not. against, and then we like we fight can, it out. We can do that hey, wow, here. you know something? You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You're both wrong. But probably. But, but but all these are true. But but let's think about that. I mean, I, I I like the way that you kind of set this up, right? Okay, let's say I'm only driving the thing 40 miles, and I'm carrying around an engine and transmission with me. Right. Basically. Basically, that I'm not using and fuel system and all these things. So, but basically, if you think about most of us driving 40 miles, but whatever to, mm -hmm. to work, you got two choices. Either I carry around that engine and transmission with me, or I carry around 90 kilowatt hours <laughs> yes. of battery. Yes, excellent point. And the truth is, is yes. that engine and transmission is less expensive mm -hmm. for the most part than that battery that you may not be using except for that trip. And refueling mm -hmm. that engine and transmission for that one trip that you're taking every month or every two months. Right way easier right way and easier. If, if you want to get really kind of like philosophical about it with most of the cars gas cars hybrid cars they can all accelerate faster than we ever need them to they you know in most situations they yes. have larger ranges with bigger gas tanks than mm -hmm. ever. so regardless of the vehicle you're probably leaving some capability on the table right but for sure it's, right. it's in a different sense i and, suppose here yeah and, and for clarity totally. let's, just, let's just you know say that for for most plug-in electric vehicles you're looking at about 20 to 40 miles mm -hmm. of of all electric range i don't think we we actually had that number out yep. out here yet. yes yep, so, yep. so i think that's really important because jake to your point it's like it depends on how you use your car what is sure. your life like mm -hmm. uh, are you are you a, a stay-at-home parent are you a short commute parent are, are you a work at home 
uh, uh, right. kind of kind of situation. So so so, and I just want to hang 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 on what what you talked about in terms of the performance of the beats, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It, so so it was very funny because like when my wife bought her her latest vehicle, which was a just normal Prius because she likes Priuses and whatever. Yeah, she reads what we rigged. <laughs> I actually was trying to convince her to get a Tesla Model Three hmm. uh, <laughs> wow. because. Because she doesn't take trips. If we're taking a trip, we're taking my car. I'm like, this is great. You could you know, uh-huh. charge it up and whatever, uh-huh. all, all that. But if you compare the Prius and the model, the model 3, I mean, okay, yeah, efficiency, whatever. They're night and day mm-hmm, in terms right. of the driving experience, right? Oh, the Prius gosh, yeah. is not exactly the driving enthusiast the vehicle. Even now, still not so much. Mm-hmm. The Model 3 is the sporty, unbelievably fast, mm-hmm. sporty vehicle. Mm-hmm. For her, she didn't care about any of that. Mm-hmm. Like that wasn't important to her. So, so again, going back to the plug-in hybrids and electrics, I think I think we almost do a disservice to not point. These plug-in hybrids are not generally rocket ships. They aren't the rocket ships that the EVs are. Oh, the EVs also give right. you that experience of, right. oh my goodness, it's so fast and it corners like it rails because the weight's really low. It's not that experience. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like it's like EV light in some ways. It is. Yeah. It's almost like Taste. you want a practical transportation. Or do you want something that is unbelievably fast and fun to drive? Right, but, mm-hmm. but, but I mean, in all fairness, th- there are any other vehicles besides pure EVs that are that quick. I mean, there, there's there's nothing totally. for inter- internal combustion that's going to keep up with a with a really hot EV. One hundred percent. But 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 it's you know I, I I'm. I'm I, I'm saying things that are not true because if I was saying like <laughs> it's an EV in a gas car, it's not. It's it right. doesn't really operate like. The EVs that we see, which are right. these rocket ships, right? And, and 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 but but also just and just to to kind of uh, again to show our audience that we're not that we're we're kind of plugged into what we're talking about here. Nicely okay. done. Okay, uh, that was you get the, one pun per episode. The plug, the plug in, uh, <laughs> but that was the, a good one. The plug-in hybrids are versions of regular cars or hybrid cars. In other words, Correct. as opposed to like right. a Lucid, which is its own kind of entity, or yeah. Tesla is its own entity. Yeah, it's a car you know, plus, so, so, as opposed to a whole right. ground up. So, so, so some of the some of the plug-in hybrids that we have on hand here at Consumer Reports Test Track, the Ford Escape, the BMW X5, the mm-hmm. Kia uh, uh, Nero, the Volvo XC60. Again, that's these are these are different versions of the same base and, car. And they're very similar in terms of the driving Correct. experience yes. of that base car. Correct. Yeah. Right, they are. And what's interesting for me and what I'm excited, you know, in particular to explore and learn more is there, we talked about how EVs are pretty much all very similar, right? You have the battery in the floor and the motor at the front mm-hmm. and the back are both uh and gas cars are all pretty similar these there's a bunch of different ways you can execute a plug-in hybrid right the alfa romeo tonale engine at the front with the transmission but then you get a motor in the back and no connection right and then others they put the motor inside the transmission and route all the power to the wheels in a more conventional way so like there's so many ways you can do this and control it and it it just is it's really cool well well the other part of it is is what is that vehicle when it's not on the ev is it a really fuel efficient hybrid or is it a yeah, gas guzzler? Yeah, right. and Could they are, and, a, and and we've seen different things. And so we're, if, we're we're going to get into that. Hold that <laughs> thought, because 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 you're absolutely on, on the right path here. But but let's you know let's talk about some of our experiences of the the plug-in hybrids that we're we're you know, currently getting up to miles or testing right now. So Jake, I, I want I want to start with you. You spent some time with the Jeep uh, Grand Cherokee Four by E. Well, I, I, what 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 was it like, kind of you know, living with this car for a few days? Sure. So um, I went and I took a little trip to Boston. So I t- keep it going. I'm back to Boston because my 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 kids are going to school there, and. Um, you know, normally I've been taking a lot of EVs and I'm always sweating trying to find chargers <laughs> on the way, which on the Mass Pike, they're still all broken. I can't figure that out. Um, it's been two years now. You keep breaking them all. What? You keep breaking them all. I keep on breaking them all. <laughs> it is actually all my fault. Um, but now it's strategy, right? So, you know, I've, you know, driven some of these plug-in hybrids and I could charge it at home. I can almost kind of make it to work, you know, completely on electricity. But here I'm driving a hundred miles, driving around Boston. Mm-hmm. And what we know about electric vehicles is like cruising on the highway at 70, you know, or 65, I guess I was driving exactly. On the speed <laughs> right? Just is this thing on. Red flag. <laughs> <laughs> it's not where they're ideal. Mm-hmm. But cruising around downtown Boston, 
game on. Mm-hmm. Electric mm-hmm. is really, really good at those low speeds and that that's stop mm-hmm. and go. So I'm like, I got a strategy. So I'm like, I'll pop it on the, you know, EV later kind of mode. So right, most right. of these have, you have these modes. So it's either, it does its own thing. I just want to use gas or I just want to use the electricity. So I put it on the, I just want to use gas on the highway. Mm-hmm. Then when I get to Boston, pop it on electricity. And then I'm driving electric all through right. downtown Boston. Mm-hmm. And that actually was a strategy that worked. Problems were as soon as I stopped for gas. Well, I didn't stop for gas. I stopped to get, get you know, go to the bathroom on the mass bike. I didn't get electricity because that was broken. Um, <laughs> bathrooms were working. Very clean, I might add. But when I stopped, when I get back in the car, it reset the thing and startly, suddenly I'm using the electricity. Oh, so, so it defaults it to a, a factory back. default? So again, okay, oh, got to okay. keep on remaining I didn't, I didn't, I didn't realize my electricity. That. Um, but the other thing is, you know, you're driving the Jeep Grand Cherokee and like on the right, you've got all these modes, like, you know, what kind of mountain am I crawling? You know, am I in sand? Am I, how steep? You know, there's a lot of different modes for the- In, in, the, in the center console. In the center console, right. exactly. Mm-hmm. Do you want the rock crawl, rock down the hill? But then the controls, which I needed in order to control, am I using the EV and all that powertrain, were hidden by the steering wheel. Like, yeah. I, I'm going like, like this, trying to look underneath, trying to figure mm-hmm. out what to do that. So it's like the stuff that you need access to were almost like an afterthought. I understand that right. car was not probably not designed to be a plug-in hybrid, but it's like, I want that. You look at a lot of new cars right now, they have all these driving modes, right? Mm-hmm. Do you want sporty, extra sporty, super sporty track mode <laughs> on your minivan? And, um, you know, but yes, these are the controls you want access to because suddenly now you're the, you know, the, the, the guy at the head of the train operating the power station, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and you do need the access to those things, but the trash bin of buttons over there on <laughs> yeah, the left side, exactly. that's Tur- turning it over to, to conductor Alex. Um, uh, <laughs> what, what, what has your experience been like so far? Uh, I mean, yeah. So the weirdest thing that's happened so far that I noticed was driving the Ford escape plugin. Um, so it also has all the modes you can play around with. You go into center screen, you can do, they name them kind of initially funny, but actually very intuitive way. It's like EV, like you said, EV now, EV later, hybrid now, or however they were. Sure. Um, I think now and later is a candy, isn't it? Yeah. (laughs) Go ahead. Now there was no candy. (laughs) Um, so you put it in EV now, so I'm using the battery after I've charged it. Right. And a lot of these vehicles, the way it works is because, and this is part of the reason why they don't have that blistering EV acceleration is because only a certain amount of the total power is coming from the motor. The other is coming from the engine, right? It's a combined output that's appropriate for mm-hmm. the car. Um, so you put it in EV only mode and you only get so much acceleration, but if you have to make a lane change or, you know, accelerate aggressively, it's going to kick the engine on to give you the full power regardless of the mode. Mm-hmm. So most of them do that with like a kick down in the switch. There's a little, or in the pedal, you hit a certain point in the pedal, kicks the engine on. Ford Escape handles it a little differently. So you put it in EV only mode and you floor it all the way and a message pops up on the cluster to press the OK button. Slow down. No. Yeah, right. <laughs> press oh. OK on the steering wheel to enable the engine. That's the message. Really? Wow. So I'm nervous because I have to make it, you know, merge aggressively, right? And I've forgotten that I have it in EV only and I go for all the power and then I have to remember to press OK on the steering wheel to turn my engine on to get me full acceleration. Now, do, will you have to do that every time? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. I didn't realize that. Wow. We look at, look at, look at Jake's face. He learned something so, too. On one hand, super nice. If you don't want to use the engine, right? Uh-huh. It made it really easy to keep it in EV mode. Some of them, it's not so easy because you can't really feel in the pedal where it's going to kick the engine on uh-huh. it's the opposite here but i think maybe in some situations that's not a good thing to, I, to I, have i'm now. almost envisioning like you being in a panic situation and slamming on the brakes and mm-hmm. then a pop-up will say do you really want to engage the brakes fully <laughs> engage ABS sure? by would, would okay. you like to you would you like full you know <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> like yeah so that was alarming I yeah think, so getting time. into traffic or something like that Correct. The trucks coming by you get in the highway i mean oh, just let me look down and yeah, and let, let me put in my request. And because, <laughs> and because I'm making a left turn, the button's now over oh, here. Oh, forget yes. you know, yeah. So uh, that was that was so so, so 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 to the point here. I mean, these are you know again, non understood types of vehicles mm-hmm. for most of the public. Non understood vehicles, probably by most of the manufacturers. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything that we see when there's something new. There's growing pains, and this is growing pains. I mean, this is a technology that is new to a lot of automakers, and we're seeing it because there isn't a consistency in how they no are 
making these things and how the interface is with them. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of opportunity to make I mean, it better. When we tell people we live with these cars every day, that's th this is a, gr a great example of exactly how, how right. we do this. And it, m my experience was with the Mazda CX-90. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I was going to be driving uh, to, to Saratoga Springs, you know, in your oh, yeah, backyard nice. um, <laughs> on, uh, on a weekend. And um, I plugged it in the night before. But I knew I was going to be like highway driving. Yeah. But to be honest with you, I got I left early in the morning, unplugged the car, closed you know closed the garage door, got in the car, started and went. Sure. And I'm cruising you know past Hartford, Connecticut, and you know EV range is pretty much gone. So I kind of <laughs> just kind of forgot about it. I yeah, tra yeah, I just yeah. treated it sure. as a normal car. Mm -hmm. So if if I was doing that kind of a drive on a regular basis, the consensus would likely be well maybe. A plug-in is not for you because right. you're on the highway. So, right. Because I spent hours on the highway. And you paid a lot more to get the plug-in version over. You right. probably would have been better well just like a hybrid. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, so, so we're kind of determining that, you know, the, the plug-in hybrids do not make sense for everyone. Short mm -hmm. commute, maybe, maybe works or out. Or even a normal commute. But just right. like, but yes, depending on what you're using the vehicle, mm -hmm. it could make a lot of sense or mm -hmm. it could make no sense right. at all. And and we, we touched on, there's there's a price premium here. We mean, because between, you know, five and, and $15,000 more than a comparable um, uh, 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 non-plug-in mm -hmm. hybrid. So, yeah. although there can be some tax incentives right. for, for them that could kind of get rid of that. I mean, um, I know even early on with, um, yeah, like when they introduced the plug-in prime uh, version of the Prius, mm -hmm. very quickly, like that became the best seller, right? Because of again incentives, there was a lot of situations mm -hmm. where depending on where you lived, you could actually pay less, mm -hmm. even if you're not going to plug in the battery, right? Just carrying along with you, it wound up, mm -hmm. you know, it, you could drive in the special lane. I could go and get these these tax incentives. And, right, and right. you know, the, the, whether it's you know tax credits, tax incentives, people are motivated by by trying to save money. And it's it's important to 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 note that you know on average, electricity costs a lot less than gasoline. I mean, mm -hmm. we we calculated Pretty that much everywhere, but here, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> but a, 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 pl a plug in can save you uh, thirteen hundred yeah. dollars a year on gas compared to to a similar mm -hmm. gas only car. Mm -hmm. So 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 that's that's right. another kind of factor to keep in mind mm -hmm. and and um and, and you know just a reminder that we have a, an excellent story written by keith barry about asking the question is a mm -hmm. plug-in hybrid uh right for you we right. also have um a, a piece on on tax breaks for these that that jake brought up mm -hmm. so you know we encourage our, our talking cars audience to definitely check those yeah. out one one thing going back to you know we're trying to learn and, and really figure out who these are for right and i think we have a good idea but we're still learning one thing I can pretty much say with confidence, regardless of tax incentives or price, is who they're not for. And I think it's not for the person who wants a simple, straightforward vehicle, right? right? right. Yes, mm -hmm. you can just use it, and but then you've kind of wasted time and money buying the, the plug-in, right? Because you do have to plug it in to get the most out of it. Sure. You've got to be pretty religious with plugging this in on a daily basis yeah. to get that range. Uh, all these modes we're talking about, right? Being the train conductor. Not everybody wants to right. be a train conductor. They just want to get in their car and, and go somewhere right yeah. right so i think if you're looking for a straightforward experience it's it's not in one of these plugins sure. yeah what, what's what's exciting going forward with consumer reports testing is we are going to come up with more and more differences between the plug-in versions versus the maybe the straight gas version and and the, the plug in mm -hmm. and, and the regular hybrid version uh we have finished our test a couple years ago for the toyota rav4 prime which which really kind of dazzled many of us uh i mean yeah jake you talked about how these aren't as quick as an ev yep. you're absolutely correct but the toyota rav4 prime is plenty quick <laughs> the quickest <laughs> rav4 yeah. so so yeah. com compared to the regular rav4 but, but right. they're just all over the place right? yeah i mean that yeah. also was vehicle that gets really good fuel efficiency even when the electricity is gone going back to my grand cherokee that i was cruising along i was got like 21 miles per gallon yeah. on the highway it's about what the regular one which is about what the regular right. one gets so mm -hmm. so it is all over the place in terms of the simplicity yes you're right i would argue it's simpler than an ev because again you're not worried about charging on a trip right um and the other simplicity about it is compared to a full EV. If you're buying a full EV, you really got to get a level two charger mm -hmm. in your home. Mm -hmm. um, yes. You do not need to yep. for these. That's a great point. You could plug it in the 110 and overnight you're going to really get mm -hmm. enough charge to charge mm -hmm. that smaller battery. Right. And you're not 
relying on that anyway because you have the gas, if right? With, forget, if you forget to charge your I, EV. I, <laughs> I, I, on, on my, my home charger, I have it plugged in. It's networked into like our electrical company because they give me some kind of like rebate mm-hmm. or whatever. And um, so what it does is, and I don't know why it does, it does this, but it, it puts off the charging until the middle of the night. Because, you know, the, the, rate, the or, your rates are cheaper. My, my rates aren't cheaper. So I don't even know why it's doing it. Okay. But, but it's like, <laughs> it, it's doing its thing. But I'll tell you what, every time I plug in the car and I go upstairs, mm-hmm. I'm sweating. I'm like, I really hope it goes on tonight because yeah. if it doesn't, I'm not getting where I need to go tomorrow. Right, right. Whereas right. again, these things, if some reason the thing don't charge, you're yep. okay. That's a great point. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are going to be pros and cons with, with plug-in hybrids just like any type of vehicle that you choose to buy. So as we continue our testing of all these plug-in models, we're going to we're going to discover all these nuances whether it's, you know, it's maybe it's the ride is different, handling is different. We're going to be measuring fuel economy in gas-only mode or regular hybrid mode, uh, and we have at least a dozen on hand that we're going to be testing. So, you know, if you're fans of talking cars, fans of consumer reports, keep checking back as we get closer and closer to the final test results of all these plug-in hybrids. Mm. And that brings us to our audience questions for this episode. We love your questions. Text 30-second videos. Send them all to talkingcars at iCloud.com. That's talkingcars at iCloud.com. First up is Jayan from Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. Hey, the hockey season's about to start, so I'm excited for that. (laughs) Jayan writes... I'm looking to buy either a hybrid or plug-in hybrid vehicle, but I'm not sure what to buy. I drive 180 kilometers a day for work, mostly on the highway. It also gets very cold up here in the winter months. Sorry, that's Captain Obvious. Yes, it does. (laughs) Saskatchewan. I am looking, I was looking into the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in, the Toyota RAV4 Prime, Mazda CX-90 plug-in, Honda Accord Hybrid, and Toyota Camry Hybrid. What would you recommend based on my scenario? Keep the good show going. Um, Jake, uh, can you give Jay an, an awesome answer? <laughs> I have a feeling he can. So, yes, so I love the question. And I just wanted to say I'm going to give the most complicated answer to the <laughs> simplest question ever. And this is just a perfect demonstration of why these plug-in hybrids are so 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 complicated. So I created a nice little spreadsheet here to answer Jan's question. So first of all, I went and converted things to, you know, units that I understand. So it's 112 miles. <laughs> I actually looked up the power rates in Saskatchewan, which is about 15 cents Canadian hmm. per kilowatt hour, which comes to about 20 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, and then I looked up the gasoline prices, which uh, right now are about a buck seventy-five a liter in Saskatchewan, which mm. is nearly nine dollars a gallon. Oh, wow! So that sounded good at first. Wow! Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's so like monopoly money. Gonna, so, so first of all, I mean, you got to start like, what is the situation that you're in? Yeah, How far along certainly. are you driving? He's driving a lot, which isn't great for plug-in hybrids, but he's also paying a lot for gasoline, which is like so. So again, looking at these vehicles, the uh, the Mitsubishi Outlander, the CX-90, and the RAV4, which are plug-in hybrids, and the Accord Hybrid and Camry Hybrid, looked at the EV range only, looked at the fuel economy uh, for those. It's very interesting. Again, this shows that not all of them are created equal. Mm-hmm. So interestingly enough, the RAV4 is much more efficient than the other two plug-in hybrids, which means for the same amount of kilowatt hours, it's about 15 15 kilowatt hours mm-hmm. of electricity, you can go 42 miles in the RAV4. You can only go 26 miles in that that Mazda 690. Right. Mm-hmm. So totally different. Mm-hmm. So calculated the cost of electricity for the EV range, then looked at the remaining trip that he had to do, which he had to pay for gasoline. And lo and behold, um, the winners in terms of cost for that trip is the RAV4 Prime and the Camry Hybrid. Hmm. Camry Hybrid getting around 50 miles per gallon. Um, the RAV4 getting about 38, but going 42 on electricity. Both will cost about 20 bucks. Mm-hmm. But yep. <laughs> There's it gets more complicated. So <laughs> he's operating in cold. He's going yes. on a highway. So so we could pull a, we, a little... I love this part of this your, is So yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, let's say you're getting about 85% of your range because sometimes you're operating in cold and sometimes you're on the highway. Suddenly... Camry Hybrid is looking better. Mm-hmm. RAV4 is not looking as good. But <laughs> let's say you're not going 180 kilometers. Let's say you're going 90. 
which is about 56 miles in, mm -hmm. in, in, in my head. <laughs> At this point, the RAV4 is way cheaper. So the point is, is that without knowing all of these variables, mm -hmm. you don't really know the answer. Right. To, again, we're, we're here to answer, Jay, and not to go and play spreadsheets all day long. Although you would like that, and I have to put a stop to it. <laughs> <laughs> we only have so many hours right. of the day. I mean, so really, I mean, the answer is, is that the RAV4 Prime or the Camry Hybrid are going to be the most efficient, mm -hmm. cost you the least on your trip. Um, the RAV4 obviously being faster, four-wheel drive, mm -hmm. more room inside. Well, I, I was going to bring that up. But more costly, and, too. And, and kind of, mm -hmm. you know, yes. th throw it to Alex, because... Because yeah. there, there are, again, more nuances here. I'm glad Jake brought up, the, you know, the all-wheel drive. Being the Saskatchewan, you're going to deal with snow all the time. Um, uh, um, the RAV4 Prime is more expensive, yeah. though, than a Camry Hybrid. So there's also yeah. that factor, also, to, to put it. Yeah. I don't know about the situation in, in that part of Canada, but they're more difficult to get, even still, uh, right. the sure. RAV4 Prime compared to the Camry Hybrid. That You'll have no problem likely getting yeah. one of those, whereas the RAV4, you might be on a, on a list of some kind. Probably something to do with that $9 a gallon. Right. <laughs> well, listen, it's, yeah. it's, 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 a, it, it's a complicated kind of calculation mm -hmm. here for Jay and, but, but Jake, you, you definitely get uh, extra credit for doing homework on this <laughs> and, and your spreadsheet is awesome. Uh, and uh, honestly, Jay and, uh, keep in touch with us. Let us know what you decide because we, we're interested on how you finally, you came to your final uh, answer. Uh, and the, we've got time for one more question. And this one is coming from Dan, who writes, I have a 2023 Honda CRV hybrid that will be parked this winter. Will connecting a SeaTech trickle charger to the car's 12 volt battery also keep the hybrid battery topped off for the five months the car sits unused? If not, will the hybrid battery be damaged if it's unused for this period of time? Um, this is kind of an interesting scenario because we always say a car is better when you drive it. Mm -hmm. So in this case where Dan knows that this vehicle is going to sit for a while, Alex, what, what, what do you think, what do you think we should, we should, uh, we should tell Dan? Yeah. So, I mean, generally on these hybrid vehicles, um, the 12 volt system and the hybrid system, they're, they're pretty much isolated. I mean, when the vehicle's running, they're interacting with each other for sure, but um, if you have this CRV hybrid connected to a C-Tech trickle charger, it will not charge the hybrid battery. So, um, you know, we have a lot of cars on hand. So just thumbing through some of the owner's manuals and things like that, you know, they, they do recommend if the car is going to sit for a long time that you start it up and drive it every couple of months at least so that the engine is running and it's charging the, um, the hybrid battery. Now, the nice thing about these and the way hybrids work and, and even plug-in hybrids in the spirit of the episode is they're always going to keep some amount of battery in the, or some amount of charge in the battery. They're never really down at 0%. Right. So there is a little bit more stability when you let them sit. That's as opposed to something like an EV, where if you were to drive it all the way to zero or zero plus miles um, and then let it sit, that battery is actually at a lower level of its total overall capacity, right? Um, but still... I would say, you know, if it is really going to sit for, for five months, try to start it up and drive it around twice or, or yep. so if you can. Yep. Yeah, I, I've got a, a the Prius in the garage that, that kind of sits around when, when, for my, my, my son when he, he's, he's away. And mm -hmm. uh, I just drove it around actually this weekend. We have a, a battery minder that's in the trunk and mm -hmm. it's kind of hardwired. I hardwired it in there because mm -hmm. fortunately battery, you know, batteries in the back. So it's easy to uh, get to. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, you know, it, it's good to definitely start it up and, you know, cars like that for other reasons too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. It's good yeah. for the engine Seriously. and it's good right. for a lot of things. Uh, a number of us here at, at Consumer Reports uh, Auto Test Center have cars that don't get a lot of use, uh, certainly in the winter. So we can definitely appreciate how to keep it healthy while it's not. Mm -hmm. Even think about just having a car that's sitting there on the tires for yeah. months on end. Yeah. You get flat spots. There's a good, good reason mm -hmm. to get, get a little. Right. Yeah, it's exercise. It's it's interesting. We've actually had a couple. I know we're not talking EVs necessarily, but a couple of our electric vehicles, the twelve volt batteries, have died because they've sat for say two weeks or or a little longer. And even though that high voltage battery had a ton of energy in it, right, because it wasn't discharged, it's when a car is sitting there, it's not back feeding into the twelve volt system, so that can still die, even though your your large giant battery still has a bunch of charge yep. in it. So, um, same thing kind of applies there. In general, cars are complex, and they're getting even 
more complex yes. as time <laughs> goes on. And that will about do it for this episode, which was produced by Dave Abrams and edited by Andrew Belize and Anatoly Shumsky. As always, check the show notes for more information on the vehicles and topics that we discussed. Just a reminder, keep your questions coming to talkingcars at iCloud.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week.